How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sunday, 6 p.m. East with me. You know, I, 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 I start the show, I feel like it's Groundhog Day every day here. My, my terrible Queens, New York accent came out on that word for some reason. I have no idea why. I see, I see Garrett giggling at it in my, on my screen. You guys don't see him. Uh, Garrett Gonzalez is going to be joining us uh, after the break. And Dave Meltzer will be joining us to break down everything that happened last weekend. You know, I start the show every week by saying, man, that was a crazy week of pro wrestling. And it just keeps getting worse. Like crazier and crazier. So I, 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 need, I need Big Dave. I need Uncle Dave to break this down for all of us. There's a tremendous amount of issues in AEW. Uh, you know, WWE's been really hot. Shockingly, Sheamus is one of the most over people that they have on that roster. And this was a guy that nobody wanted to see two years ago have a match on TV. It's unbelievable. But we're going to talk about the fallout from the backstage melee at AEW after the scrum. The most devastating event in combat sports, the scrum between AEW and UFC from the other night. You know, people were punished. Suspensions are handed out. There's a third-party investigation happening. We're going to ha talk about all of that. I, not, not, I'm not going to recap the whole thing, but I want to talk about it. Uh, you know, the big question here is, how does AEW recover from this? Uh, the negative stigma that it's attached to this, the, what the next move Tony Khan makes is very important. And obviously, we're going to talk to Dave about that. Um it just, I, I feel terrible for Tony more than anything else because, you know, you're, you're given these moments. It's a three-year-old company. You're given these moments only a few times, four times a year. He has a big pay-per-view and the last one was, was a debacle at the end. No fault of his. And, uh, this one turned into insanity. Uh, this is a, this is a big story and I'm sure more information is going to come out in the next couple of weeks, but when we get back, Garrett Gonzalez and the one, the only, Dave Meltzer will be joining me. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition with me, Andrew Zarian. And I got I got two awesome co-hosts today. One, uh, my co-host on We're Live Pal, one of my favorite people to do a podcast with, the one, the only, Garrett Gonzalez. What's going on, Garrett? Two times in one week. Wow. Two it's times great. we're doing a show this week. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun. And on the phone. I, he needs no introduction. Everybody knows him. Dave Meltzer. What's going on, Dave? What a week, huh? <laughs> what a week. You know, I say yeah, that I every show. Every start of the show. I start off with, man, this was some week. Let's break it down. And I, I don't think I could do this justice this week after. Uh, I mean, I, I've Garrett and I spoke about it on Tuesday. I spoke about it on Friday. Uh, we're talking about it again today, but this is a mega, mega story in the world of professional wrestling. So who better than Dave Meltzer to talk about this? A uh, little recap for everybody. A uh, little fight happened. A brawl happened at AEW uh, right after the show for uh, after All Out. An investigation is happening. Suspensions have been handed out. Uh, you guys know the whole story. So, Dave, let's go into this. Um, you know, this is this is crazy uh, to talk about, you know. Everybody knows the importance of the of su the success of AEW and professional wrestling, and especially in that company. Everything matters right now for them, and the fact that this happened uh, it really is surprising to me. Well, I mean, I, I I could see a lot of it coming, but I, I, the brawl part I didn't see coming, and even the punk stuff at the scrum. Um, I mean, I guess I saw it coming the minute he got in and 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 started. I kind of could see where that one was going, but. Um, I didn't know that he was going to do that, but yeah, the, the fight I didn't see coming, and that kind of changed everything. And uh, you know, I don't know the fallout yet. I mean, obviously, uh, the fact that I mean, Punk's out. He tore his triceps. He had, he's already had surgery, so he's out for you know eight months ish, and um, so that's that's a lot of time to heal wounds and to perhaps bring him back, perhaps not. I don't know. And then as far as like. The Young Bucks and Omega got stripped of the trios titles, uh, which means that, um, you know, I mean, I was not shocked, but a little surprised because if it's only going to be, let's say, you know, a quick investigation, they look at it for a couple weeks, they decide they're going to bring them back at that point or, you know, just do a quick suspension and, and you know, um, bring them back then. They really didn't have to strip them of the championship, but they did right away. So, um, 
that I thought to be very interesting, and um, and that maybe even the most interesting aspect of the post-fight situation was stripping them of the titles because, um, in theory, you would only do that if they were going to be gone for longer than I presumed that they would be gone. But we'll have to wait and see. What 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 did you initially think they would be gone for? Just uh, the couple of weeks for the I, investigation, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't expect you know. Um, but again, you know, until until we get the full story of what happened, I'm trying to not really, um, you know, say like, oh, what's what's the right suspension? You know, I don't know. I don't know because I don't, we don't know the full story. You know, what's the right thing to do? I mean, I I, I feel a steel should be gone. I mean, I, I can say that because his job was to calm things down, not to hit somebody with a chair and bite somebody. Um, but as far as the other people, you know, I want to kind of give them their say and and see what happens. I mean, punk through the first punch, not a good thing at all, but what happened before that punch was thrown? I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll get the story, but no one's, you know, no one's going to go in detail on it right now until the investigation's over. Now on that suspension list right now is CM Punk, obviously, Ace Steel, obviously, Kenny Omega, Matt and Nick Jackson, Pat Buck, Chris Daniels, and Michael Nakazawa, along with Brandon Cutler. Uh, I, I mean, I, I find it interesting that Pat Buck and, and, Chris Daniels were also suspended. Is it is it because they were in the room uh, when it happened, or well, they? Mu- I, I mean, my gut was that they were that they were probably looking at breaking it up. Yeah, that's how others, I was seeing it too. Uh, uh, others probably were as well. I mean, I'm figuring. You know, generally speaking, when there's a fight in wrestling, it's usually very short, and everybody runs in to break them up. Um, you know, I I don't know. Again, like why were these guys suspended? Maybe it was just a thing where. Everybody in the room who was involved physically, because there are people in the room that were not suspended that are witnesses, um, but everyone who got involved in the pull apart, maybe they just suspended them until, you know, it's kind of like something happens on the police force that's controversial. You just kind of give them administrative leave until you look at everything. Even, even if you think that they're totally innocent, that's just sort of a protocol, and I think that that might be the protocol here when it comes to, like, some of those guys that were breaking it up, um, that, you know, just let's keep things cool, let's just have them... Um, maybe not have them around, perhaps it's as easy as to say, because if they are and they tell people, maybe more of the story will get out, and I'm sure that they're looking at less and less of that story getting out, because one of the things they didn't like internally was that the story got out, although you know that was one story where I can't imagine that anybody would think it wouldn't get out. Yeah. Uh, Garrett, what, what did you make of this whole thing? I, I mean, we were texting, obviously. You were there. I was here in New York, but bonkers. So actually, you know, the thing that Dave and I had a long conversation about this on Friday. And the one thing that I realized I didn't even ask him about was about the suspension. So it's kind of a question to both of you, which is, do you think if they if they did not get stripped when you're dealing with talent and there's two sides, it would seem that maybe Tony is favoring one side unless both sides were stripped of their titles because it's essentially the same punishment for the same crime kind of thing. I believe that that's the case. But the difference is is that Punk, you could say he's not stripped of the title because of what happened. You could say he's stripped of the title because he's injured because he has to be stripped of the title because of the injury. And just say I wasn't stripping anyone of the title and just leave it at that. But he, you know, quickly strip them of the title, which I, I just found, you know, and I'm not saying right or wrong. I just found that very interesting because if they're going to be gone for two weeks, three weeks, whatever, you know, you just finished a tournament uh, for the championship and then you kind of, you know, with, with great matches and you kind of throw it away and then you put it on a team that was not even in the finals. And, you know, I mean, it was, it was a decision that he made and he hasn't really explained the decision. So, um, and, and I don't expect that he will until this thing is over. I mean, he was very careful uh, to not say anything past, you know, that whatever the lawyer said, his, this is as much as you can say, and don't say anything more. Yeah, uh, obviously. Now, there, the, there are two things that got set up. One is uh, new champions for the trios titles. We saw that happen on Dynamite. We also got a, a tournament of champions that will culminate in, here in Queens at Arthur Ashe Stadium. I kind of, you know, I would have loved to see Punk and Arthur Ashe. I would have loved to see Kenny again in Arthur Ashe and the Bucks in Arthur Ashe. But I guess, I mean, as of right now, we're not getting that. I, I, I can't imagine that we will. Maybe I, even, even for Bucks and the, and Kenny. But mm, two, two, two weeks. I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't bet on it. But I don't know that there's. I mean, we're not going to see Punk. I mean, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay, 
with that. And that. But that was going to be the case no matter what because of the injury. But, I mean, as far as, yeah, you know, good chance. And, I mean, he's going to load up the show. I mean, you're getting – the world, you know, you're getting the world championship decide match, so you're going to get a, a AEW championship change, which is a pretty big deal, and there's a good chance you're getting a tag team title change as well. So it's a major, you know, and I'm sure the lineup will be, be very loaded underneath as well. I mean, he's yeah. doing four hours of television taping, and and it's his. I mean, this is his biggest uh, television taping of the year, the Arthur Ashe Stadium show, and that's part of. I think what he wants to make tradition is that the Queen they'll do Queens once a year in September, and it'll be the biggest. Uh, dynamite of the year and the biggest rampage of the year. You listen, I love that. I- I'm seven minutes away by train. <laughs> you know, I, I just get <laughs> yeah. on the train and I, it's like two stops. But, you know, th- it has been slower in the ticket sales for this one. The last one was, you know, 20,000. 20, I-, I don't see them doing 20,000. It looks like they have a stage this oh, no. year. But I think they, they have about 2,000 tickets still available for this event. Uh, probably more. I mean, I mean, it, there. the last I looked, it was just under 11.5, which I think is pretty good when they... When they um, first announced coming back, um, I, I know that I mentally thought uh, twelve would be a big success, um, and under ten would be not would be kind of disappointing. So they're heading to twelve. I think it's a big success. I mean, it's the New York market, and the first time in is always going to be the biggest. And I mean, WWE hasn't put in more than twelve at a television taping in, in God knows how long. I mean, the Garden was right at twelve which was, you know, sold out at the Garden. So if they can do the same as, as WWE did, and, and they've beaten them at UBS Arena several times. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I would call that good when you're the number two company and you beat number one in their yeah. own, own home market. Uh, when we come back, we're going to a quick break. When we come back, I have a bunch more questions for Dave Meltzer. We'll do one more segment with Dave, and then Garen and I are going to take over the show. Uh, Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. Andrew Zarian here. I'm joined by Garrett Gonzalez, my co-host on We're Live, pal, on Tuesdays on WrestlingObserver.com. And, of course, the Dave Meltzer. The Dave Meltzer. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Dave. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Dave. Dave, uh, you know, I have a ton of questions for you, but one main thing that people have been asking me is, you know, what, what, you know, what does Tony do now? You know what? What? What is his next move? We we've seen that they've they've been attempting to restructure, especially the talent side of things, uh, the talent relation side of things, I should say. Uh, you know, the, these it's professional wrestling. It's a lot of machismo. Things like this happen a lot. It just doesn't really spill over into actually, you know, going to fisticuffs and 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 right after a pay per view. So. You know, the yep. big question here is, you know, what kind of responsibility does Tony have he, on this? Uh, what does he do next? And by the way, I'm not putting any blame on Tony. He's not the one that swung. He's not the one in that scrum that lost his mind while eating muffins and drinking seltzer. He, he you know, you, you kind of, you kind of, uh, he was in a really bad position here. Um, what, I mean, everyone, what, what, ever, everyone can be criticized because the reality is, is that, that, I mean, if you could do it all over again, I'm sure he would do things different. I'm sure a lot of people do things different. I would do things different, and I was just a spectator in all this. You know, it's just, you know, things happen, and, you you know, I mean, I'm I'm certain that A. Steele would, would do things different. You know, I think that, you know, whatever got into his head at that moment, you know, wasn't, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, I got to, whatever, whatever it was, I'm sure he would do things different. I'm sure, I'm sure the Young Bucks would do things different, and I don't know if Punk would do things different or not, but um, I would hope that he would, put it that way. Yeah, I mean, as of today, he's the one that's not really affected by any of it because he would have been out anyway. You know, he 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 hasn't. It wasn't a. He would have been off of TV, so it's not like we would have. We're missing Punk from TV because of his actions, uh, or maybe you know they would have maybe kept him as a on air role in some position. I don't know, but you, you know, I mean, they could they could they could have they could have brought him to announce, but I don't think that they would because with the last time he was out, they never brought him. And then again, it yeah. was a different kind of an injury. That was an injury. The, the foot injury was one where flying around would be um, really not good, whereas the arm injury, at first he shouldn't be around, but in a couple of months, as he's healing up and not being able to wrestle, he probably could have flown in and, and, and done, you know, commentary or something if they wanted him. But, but that's not, I'm sure that's not going to happen, though. I, I mean, I don't expect him on TV for a long, long time, if, if he's even still with the company. Have you heard anything about the Discovery side of things and the Warner, Warner uh, Brothers side of things, uh, you know, reacting to any of this? Has there been anything that comes out from there? No, no. And I know people there, and um, I think that they're sitting and watching. I, you know, that's the impression I've got. It's like, um, I'm sure they're not happy with it, but I'm, I would, 
not think that they're willing, you know, I mean, I don't think this is a giant thing. I mean, the ratings are a giant thing, and how the ratings change or not change, of course, that would be very, very big. But, um, you know, there's, there's stuff that happens in every company. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's still mild, you know, compared to Vince being kicked off, and, and it's not like, uh, you know, I mean, what, what did USA and what did um, Fox think of all the stuff with Vince? I mean, I'm sure they weren't thrilled at whatsoever, but life went on. Yeah, benefiting you know, like from they, it. They're benefiting from all this now. The ratings have gone up, you know? Yeah, well, for, for WWE, yeah, a yeah. lot of the changes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and AEW, um, I don't think the ratings are going to go up from this, but, I mean, stranger things have happened. I remember when uh, when Bret Hart left and I thought, oh, my God, you know, like, uh, now WWE's in trouble because now all the big stars are on the WCW side practically, and and uh, it didn't work out that way. It, it worked out that, you know, historically – that benefited WWE. They had a big comeback the next year. Yeah. So it's it's hard to say what this means, um, what's going to happen. The best thing is if they can figure out a way to solidify their fan base and make their fan base, you know, kind of like the, where the Moxley promo was. Um, that's the best case scenario, that they go in there and they say, hey, like you fans, we're a part of this, we built this, and we're not going to let this tear us down, you know, something along those lines. Um, you don't, because, I mean, the key is, is that, uh, you don't want the fan base going, uh, you know, it was a bad time for this because WWE is hot. I mean, if WWE was very, very cold, I don't think it would hurt as much as when WWE is hot. But yeah, that way. Uh, they're, they're definitely on an incline right now. Garrett, you know, here, here's, here's a question for you. Um, who, who do you think, whose legacy and, and Dave too, you know, uh, whose legacy is affected by this the most? I mean, CM Punk, this was his, his redemption, redemption story, right? He left WWE in this in this chaotic way. Uh, the the podcast on Thanksgiving with Colt really became this chaotic thing. There were lawsuits that happened. He he was turned off to pro wrestling. Finally came back, and he's exiting. You know, in a similar fashion with with chaos. Uh, seven years later, eight years later. So, Garrett, who do you think is affected the most here? I think it depends on what side of this weird wrestling war that you are on if you are against uh kenny and the bucks you probably think that oh you know they can't handle x y and z being vps and if you are someone who didn't really believe punk you know what was the happy-go-lucky punk that we had seen you probably think oh you know that's who we all thought that he was i really don't you know from a wrestling history that's probably sits a little bit more with dave we know that kenny omega already made Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame. I think there was uh, an opportunity for for CM Punk to uh, get his numbers a little bit more closely to where he would he would qualify. And I think the Bucks, you know, they have to get in as far as tag team. But that's kind of what I think when I think of legacy is you know the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame. Um, I think CM Punk probably has the most to lose legacy wise, but ultimately I'm not even sure he cares about that because of what he walked away from the first time. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I, I, I kind of agree with that in the sense of when all is said and done, um, he will be the one most judged by this unless he comes back and does stuff that makes you kind of say, okay, it was a bad, he was in a bad place or whatever. I mean, and, and guys can be rehabbed, um, and he can, he can too. So, so, but if he just, if we never see him again, and this is his swan song in wrestling, um, yeah, it's a bad swan song for sure. It's it's a bad way to go out, um, legacy wise. And for the other guys, um, Omega and, and it's just too early to say. I mean, there's Omega and the, the Bucks still have time left on their career, even though you know Omega's obviously. I mean, he he, he had a great match on on uh, Sunday, but he is he does have a lot of injuries and a lot of mileage. And um, I think Nick Jackson's got a lot of years left, and Matt Jackson's got years left as well to over come or override whatever this is if they're not you know depending on how this comes out at the end if they end up where they didn't do anything wrong and they're back as evps when this investigation is over i don't think it hurts them at all at that point with punk um you know it just depends on what he does next i think you know one thing that really stood out to me the last couple of weeks of AWTV is how uh cm punk being back on tv has really uh, monopolized everything else that's happening right uh, you look at the promo against Hangman Page that, you know, kind of it was it was set to f- make him look like a failure because he's obviously not going to run out there when he's getting called out. And that entire fiasco overshadowed the return of Kenny Omega on TV, which 
is a huge return for for any pro wrestling fan. Even if you're not, uh, if you're a casual AEW viewer and you're not this hardcore viewer, it's still a tremendous moment that totally got erased, in my opinion. Uh, and, well, I've got erased the, the MJF return and the MJF return. Yeah, and that that nobody talked about it. And you know that MJF return significantly, probably the biggest return for the company of the year. Uh, significantly big because he is a future possible world champion in that company. He's very much over with the following. Uh, you know, a lot of that, when you look at the three people affected here, it's Kenny Omega, Adam Page, and and and, and obviously MJF. That That's the future of that company. Yeah. Um, I do think that that is the one thing, is that, um, um, you know, the returns, you know, especially, especially the MJF return, which obviously... I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that the November pay-per-view was supposed to be Punk and MJF for the championship. Um, and that being, you know, I mean, obviously that match is not, also not going to happen, but MJF, I still, you know, I'm pretty sure will be in that championship match. October is going to be the final, so whoever wins, and then, uh, you know, um, Mox, I mean, um, MJF has the next shot. Um, but again, like, after November, if he's the champion, not the champion, but he's going to be a main event guy on every show, his... The impact of that big return um, not being as gigantic as it should have been because of the other stuff, in time, I don't think that really matters other than, you know what I'm saying? It's like in November, it's going to be where it's going to be anyway. So it's like if he's great and he's drawn, you know, and he's got the ability to move numbers and things like that, he he will move numbers because this story, like everything, this story is going to last a couple of weeks and, and just like, look, like with WWE, the story was way, 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 way bigger. It was Vince McMahon, and uh, a couple of weeks later, you know, it's like people are talking about, oh, you know, the main event and and um, you know Drew McIntyre winning the title or not winning the title. People will move on to your storylines, and the storylines will end up being where they would be most likely anyway. So it's like it it does it did hurt the initial sh- the initial thing could have been bigger, but I think that when you know when it comes time to him. Um, main eventing a pay-per-view and then building that last, that last several weeks of the pay-per-view or month or month plus um so the pay-per-view is going to do based on that month plus of build not based on the fact that his initial pop wasn't as big as it should have been yeah yeah it's very very interesting time for this company um you know would you say this was their worst year since they started as far as you know optics go i know financially they had the best year possible they have a hundred million dollar uh, gross revenue year but as far as the optics went, do you think they took a lot of hits this year, right? Um, well, I mean, this was a big hit for sure. Um, and injury wise, they took a lot of they had a lot of injury problems this year. And Cody, um, the Cody thing was big, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so in that sense, I mean, it's, it's it's really hard for me to say because then it's like I'm, I'm, it feels like I'm minimizing the Brody Lee death, but. Um, you know, I mean, in, in, in a sense, I could see what you're saying as far as the coolness of AEW, you know, started getting chipped this year. Yeah. And it, it really, it was really going on really, you know, at the end of last year, coming off of that Chicago show and, and the November show, the momentum was high, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Dave, thank you for call- coming on the show. We're going to a break. Always appreciate Dave Meltzer on the show. But Garrett Gonzalez sticking by. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Live, you know, I, I I apologize to you guys. I There was a hard-hitting question that I had to ask Dave, and uh, this just shows you what an amateur I am as a journalist, but I'm going to throw it to Garrett, and, and this is the question that I've everybody's dying to know. What is up with his Twitter image changing? <laughs> Everybody wants to know. That's the hardest-hitting question in all of professional wrestling right now. Forget about Tony Khan. Forget about CM Punk returning. What happened? Dave changed his photo on Twitter? Yeah, it was like 10 years or something, right? Like he'd been on Twitter using that same photo for it 10 was years. Just, it was just a piece of paper. <laughs> so we're, 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 try, we're trying to get him verified, which, which is yes. the thing. So but there's, there's a couple of different things that we're trying to do to make sure that he gets verified. And one of those was changing the photo. And I also gave him a little bit of a, of a background, a cover photo but I, I told him that it was coming. I just told him 
months ago that it was coming that we were going to have to fix that. And he's fine with it. He he doesn't he doesn't care. And then if he if he does get verified, then he can change it back to whatever he wants. Love it. We get Love to see the, um, the 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 screenshot of the Wrestling Observer newsletter again. I, I you know what we need uh, the, the the actual piece of paper newsletter needs a Twitter account now. Gosh, how many how many parody Dave accounts do you think are out oh, there? Oh God, there's tons. I I I I get the messages from most of them. Did you, I get tons did you of them. It, in your early days of Twitter? Did you think of starting a parody Dave Twitter account? I I I have to tell you something, and, and I'm so embarrassed because I, I live on Twitter, right? Because that's part of my job. I despise yeah. social media. I, 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 I think it's the end of humanity, social media. I, I, it, at the end, you know, thousands of years are going to go by and we're going to self-destruct and there's going to be like somebody talking about this. They're going to say, you know, it's that, it's that Twitter. It ruined it for everybody. <laughs> you know, uh, about, I, I never, I I never say, had a parody. <laughs> I would say about, gosh, we're probably talking almost 20 years ago now. Everyone had a blog, right? You remember the blogging days. Everybody had a blog. I wrote a story that was a satire of an MMA fight, uh, and I used the, the the byline of Mave Deltzer. Oh, Mave Deltzer! I like Mave Deltzer. You just need biceps, yeah. like just do photos of <laughs> biceps, and and you're good. Most jacked human being in in all of uh, wrestling media, fight uh, combat sport media, Dave Meltzer. You know, so I have a question for you. Um, did, yep. did, I got asked this question. I didn't. I didn't know how to respond. I needed a minute to think about it. Uh, and and Matt, our producer, asked me this. He goes, "Do you think this is the most significant year in professional wrestling?" And there is, you know, room to argue that for sure. Vince McMahon exiting WWE as of today. You know, we don't know a year or two from now he'll do a big ha ah, return. Um, Vince McMahon leaving with, with uh, a terrible uh, hit to his semi not great reputation. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the CM Punk's uh, insanity on Sunday. Uh, this this issue happening in AEW. Some people uh, questioning Tony Khan as far as, you know, his presence as an authority in that company. This is a big year for wrestling. Would you say it would be the most significant, one of the top ones? Because we have many of those, obviously, we could we could talk about. That's a great question. And, uh, you know, Dave does those uh, yearly observer books. I think you have a few of them behind you, those yearbooks, those observer yes. yearbooks. And, he, and he's, like, trying to write them as if, like, these are the, the important years in wrestling and, and 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 MMA comes into that to play as well. And so you can look at the the years that he's that they've cataloged because to him those are very important. And I think he said one of the ones that he wanted to do was 19, 2019 because that's the creation of AEW. But in 2019 you don't have Vince McMahon stepping down. And so you know, if you wanted to sort of argue like, you know, 19 versus 22, uh, I don't know. What's the bigger story? Vince McMahon stepping down or the creation of AEW? Yeah. I, by the way, I, I have all of these because uh, I, I believe I wrote to Dave once years. I'm talking years ago, begging him to do like a catalog like this, because uh, mm -hmm. I actually I, I, you know, you read the whole year. We have 99, 93, 97 and 14. No, no 2001 yet. That's that's the one that I wanted. That's the one I want too. I told Dave that's the one I want. Yeah. But you know, so, these are all uh, significant for sure, right? Yeah, I, I think fourteen hundred percent yeah. was a significant year. We saw a, a, a semi boom period happen in that year as well. But you know, oh seven changed the industry big time. Um, it, it, it was what about so eighty four. Let's 84. go back to eighty four. Yeah. WWE, you know, becomes an, a, a really just becomes a national company and takes wrestling by storm and Hulkamania, you know, on a bigger stage than just uh, AEW, AEW, AWA. Um, so so uh, it's funny that, that you talked about, you know, Dave, can you catalog? I found this was years ago. I'm talking like 20 years ago. I was at a flea market and I found a wrestling observer yearbook from 1984. Wow. And back in the day, Dave would compile the year end stuff to basically give the big picture of kind of what you're talking about. What, how, why, why was this year memorable? What were the big hits? And it was just a, 
I, I think the the cover was like bluish, like like it was had a bluish tint, and the photos were black and white. And so I bought it years and years and years ago. And then I, when I was moving, I found it, and I was like, "When's the last time you've seen this?" And I gave it to him. And so he has it in in his house now. But he has been doing, you know, he that was actually part of your not part of the subscription but you could actually purchase at the end of the year here's your observer yearbook to i never knew summarize that. everything yeah i never knew that i'm gonna get in trouble now i get an infraction maybe That's we what can happens find here. one i bet I you get can in... find them on ebay we should just go i'm sure you buy can. a couple of yeah no I, I think that's very cool but i do think you know i would say 19 tremendous year because for for people in the business in the industry i think 19 was a huge year because it gave an opportunity to a lot of people that would not have been on national television. Joey Janela would have never been on national television. Sammy Guevara would have never been on national. Sonny Kiss would never have been on national. Wardlow maybe would not have been discovered at that point. Mm -hmm. um, th there's there's a lot of these. So I, I think 19 is, is definitely significant uh, for wrestling. But this year will be, I mean, so chaotic from the beginning of the year. Cody leaving AEW. Uh, Vince McMahon's exit, the injuries that that plague both companies, and, and now the culmination of this. Now, uh, very interesting stuff. Very, very interesting. Some other stuff also happened. Uh, Dave Meltzer gave Gunther and Sheamus five stars, and I have to tell you, there's a lot of controversy over that. I that match in like I absolutely loved it. I loved it yeah. because I did not have that expectation for Sheamus. Uh, and Gunther, I should have, because they're both ridiculously hard-hitting monsters. But I, I, you know, very interesting that how the pendulum swings constantly in wrestling. Sheamus is a guy that nobody wanted to see wrestle two years ago. Uh, no knock at him. I'm just saying, fan perspective, right? He wasn't. Yeah, uh, he, he was, wasn't. He, he in, was. Oh, he was overexposed for quite a while. And they gave what are the 20, 2015? They put the title on him, right? Was it 2015? Something like that. Whatever that was. Uh, nobody wanted that. Everybody was disappointed in that. Um, you know, it just shows you how wrestling changes. Your perspective on a character could change tomorrow. Ronda Rousey defeated Lacey Evans and, 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 and a whole onslaught of people in four minutes on SmackDown. According to her social media, she was also fighting her top during that match her top well. yeah yeah she was adjusting <laughs> it constantly do you um, know this did, did you hear the story of how we all watched gunther and sheamus when we were no at, in schaumburg no so so after the q a was it at the chili's um, no no we were in <laughs> a different place we weren't in um uh hoffman estates we were in a different area because that's where all the wrestling folks were conrad's show was there in schaumburg so uh, after the q a uh, they're going to watch the show on Peacock. And then uh, I went to go get lunch. Me and my buddy Jeremy went to go get lunch. And then Brian and Filthy Tom also went to get lunch. So Dave and Corey and a couple of other people have watched this match. And they just think this is five stars. So when we were coming back to watch it, they were like, nope. We're just going to watch it again. It was so good. Wow. We're going to watch it again so you guys can watch it as we did that's how much dave enjoyed that match and yeah. it was the match of the weekend star star ratings wise for not only uh clash at the castle also for all out like i i think that i don't think anything did as, as many stars uh as that match at all out listen you know what uh, great match you get yeah. it's a different style you know and it just it's a very different style of wrestling, and that's and it's two big guys that didn't do any flips, didn't do any high impact moves as far as you know a, a plancha through the second rope. You know, did we get a plancha through the we, second rope? Maybe we did. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember? You remember when we were talking about this on We're Live, pal? Do you think Triple H part of Triple H's game plan was to sneakily have the wrestling show of the year? Right, because when we look at those matches, well, that's we're what like, that's what wow. WWE told me. By the way, WWE told me that they wanted to be the show of the weekend, and that was the right. plan with this uh, over and over again throughout that entire week. Every conversation was, you know, we're trying to make this the show of the weekend. And I, th it was it was a sneaky, sneaky like because they didn't they don't promote their wrestling in that way, right? Yeah. AEW promotes their wrestling in great matches. WWE says we just have big shows. I thought that was a, a really, really good. And look, if you if you're WWE and you can do shows like that every time you have one of these PLEs, 
you kind of give people less of a reason to watch AEW, right? You're giving because, them wrestling, right? Because these AEW shows are five and six hours, and you get great matches. These WWE shows are three and a half hours, and if you can get great matches, you know you're sort of taking a little yeah. bit of AEW's territory there. And, and that's and that's I think that's what Hunter's plan is right now because we're seeing longer matches. You know, yeah. wrestling is happening on their TV. Uh, it's still long. Raw is still very long at three hours. SmackDown, you know. It, it, They've had some fantastic weeks and they've had some terrible weeks. Uh, I thought this week was okay. I, it was shocking, however, uh, Sheamus was in that Imperium match on SmackDown. But you know, this is you love that you love I, that match, didn't you? I do. I do. I, I love that match. I I like you know big giant dudes beating the crap out of each other. I'm very much into yeah. that. Uh, you know, I also like the flips too. But my 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 wrestling is very bad. Like what I like about wrestling, I, I like a lot of everything. You know. There's mm -hmm. not one. I'm mm -hmm. not a big deathmatch guy. That's the only thing I would say I'm not crazy about is like fluorescent tubes <laughs> and pizza cutters. Like uh, that's not. But I don't. I don't poo poo on your parade. Watch it if you yeah. like it. Enjoy it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. I know. I'm with you. I, if if I, I, I I've been saying of late, if the wrestling that I like is the predominant wrestling and the only wrestling that exists, a lot of people would be unhappy because not everyone likes what I like. You know. So. I'm getting I'm getting yelled at over this uh, this Dave Meltzer question that I did not ask him. Here's a great tweet. <laughs> Le Schneider bot of Griff Grifton says Andrew forgetting to ask Dave Meltzer about his profile picture change shows he still has many years of learning ahead of him. Missed a huge <laughs> scoop, Andrew. I replied. I got the answer. He says not from the man himself. Secondhand source. Okay, but amateur stuff. The, you, know, you know what? You, you he's actually right. I'm so disappointed in myself. Okay, but wait. So he's a little off in that. Yeah. I'm the one who changed You're the, the photo. One. <laughs> so technically, you did ask the per and and I I just let Dave know, and he knew that I was going to do it eventually. But I changed the photo, so you were talking to the right person. Yeah, yeah. I uh, <laughs> funny, <laughs> amazing. That's the big scoop here. <laughs> That's the big story here. Guys, we're going to go to a quick break. couple minutes left in the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Final few minutes of the show here. Big thank you to Dave Meltzer for joining me today. And, of course, Garrett Gonzalez, my tag partner. I liked it, man. We, you know, we've talked about you and me and Dave doing stuff together. And this is, I think, is this the first time that we've... No, we did the we did Third. a world life pal with him a couple of different times. Third time, but yeah, yeah, we've been talking about doing a show with just the listen, three of us. So this was listen, fun. It, it's very possible that may be coming. Can I ask you something? And and I may have missed this the last couple of days. Is there a Jericho and Claudio match for the title happening? Uh, not that I heard, but you know what? I had I also didn't watch Rampage, so if it happened if they did some announcement on Rampage, then I would have missed it because I what a great match for Arthur Ashe, huh? That would be amazing. You know what? I'm willing to bet if that title goes on Jericho, they are very close to announcing a TV deal. They teased it on Think? Rampage. There you go. Jericho teased going to Ring of going for the Ring of Honor title. You know what? I would love to see that. I would love well, to I see mean, that match for the title. They both, you know, they're they're, they're both having you know rejuvenations in their career, right? Like Chris. Chris has always been a giant star, but uh, just recently he lost the weight. He, you can tell his confidence uh, with his body is is there. He's having great matches, and Claudio, man, Claudio, I'm sure he did the best that he could in in WWE. Though he probably didn't like the way that that his character went, but man, the dude's having great matches. I, yeah. I hope that he gets, you know, the ROH thing is good, but I want to see him in the mix more in Me AEW too. as well. Me too. I just want to remind everybody, I'm going to do a little, little, uh, little uh, favor for Matt Ryan, semi co-host here on the show. He wanted to let everybody know that Catalyst Wrestling is returning to Brooklyn on September 18th for State of Mind featuring Jack Evans, Anthony Green, Kobe Carino, and more. Save $5 off when you go to CatalystWrestling.com. There you go. I did, the, I did the plug, Matt. You don't have to message me 500 more times, right? <laughs> Typical promoter. 
just there messaging me and bombarding me. Guys, this yeah, was a blast. Done, he got the job done. Garrett, thank you for joining me. Everybody, thank you for joining us this week. We'll see you all next time. Take care.